Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial on Java Streams, we're going to look at the flat map intermediate operation in Streams. Whereas map, which we've already seen, lets you turn each stream element into some other kind of element, possibly of the same type, possibly a different type, flat map lets you turn each stream element into two or more potentially stream elements. First, let's take a look at an example of flattening a 2D array of strings because that will give you insight into where flat map gets its name. So I'm going to have a 2D array of strings here. Let's set that equal to some strings. So I'm going to have here, I'll just put animals in here. Let's say cat, dog, and I'll duplicate that line and we'll have mouse, fox. Let's have a third one here, horse. And I need to give this some kind of name, so I'm going to call it strings. Now, one thing that we haven't covered yet, I don't think, is how you actually turn an array into a stream. And there are two really important, very similar methods that you should know about. That is stream.of and arrays.stream. Now let's turn this array of strings into a stream. And there are two basic ways to turn arrays into streams. You can either use arrays.stream or you can use stream.of. And most of the time these are pretty similar. An exception is that arrays.stream, if you use it with an array of ints, longs or doubles, is going to give you an int stream, long stream or double stream, whereas stream.of just always gives you a kind of generic stream of objects. So here we could use either one of those. Let's say arrays.stream and we want to stream these strings and then we could have a terminal operation like for each and maybe put system.out colon colon print line in there. Except I'm getting really sick of typing system.out colon colon print line. So what I'm going to do is create an alias. What does for each actually expect? It expects in this case a consumer. That's just a functional interface that accepts an argument, and doesn't return anything. And it's a consumer of some template type that is a superclass of string. So what I could do here is write consumer, use the template class style, and let's just make this a consumer of object. I'll call it print and set that equal to system.out colon colon print. Let's add the import for consumer. And then we're also going to have the same thing, but print line, and that's going to be print line as well. So now I can actually use these right here. So I can just write print line, which is going to save me some typing, which is always good. So if I run this now, we get what we would expect. Remember, each element in this is itself an array of strings. So it's not surprising that the elements that we get here are going to be arrays of strings. However, what if I want a stream that consists of these individual strings here? And that's where flat map comes in useful. Let's maybe break this into multiple lines for clarity. And I can put in a flat map here. Now flat map needs to return a stream for each element. And in the end, the stream that we'll end up with will consist of the elements from all those different streams that we've created from each element. So if each element is itself an array, we can get each element here. Let's call it S. And we could use arrays.stream, for example, or stream.of, and apply that to each element in turn. The important thing is that we are returning a stream here. With a Lambda expression, remember, you don't need an explicit return statement. This is just going to get evaluated. It's going to be the return value of the Lambda expression, and it is a stream, and that's important for flat map. And then when we run this, what we find is that we've got the individual elements. So we've sort of flattened this structure into a kind of one dimensional stream structure, which is the point of it. And that's where flat map gets its name from. Now there's a quicker way to do this, which you may have spotted, because all we're doing is getting the element in this argument here and then applying arrays.stream to it. So instead we can just pass a reference to the arrays.stream method. So let's get rid of this. And instead of that, we're just going to write arrays colon colon stream. And if we run that, it has the same effect. So this kind of highlights the flattening behavior of flat map 
But flatmap is basically just a function which can take one item or one element in your stream and turn it into several items. So that means we can use it for all kinds of different purposes. Let's take a look at a slightly different example. And for this, I'm going to need a multi-line string. So I'm going to create this via the following method. Let's write string lines equals, and we'll use this kind of triple quotation mark. I think this should work okay in all reasonably current versions of Java. If it doesn't, of course, you can use any um, suitable technique for creating a multi-line string in Java, but hopefully this should work for you. And let's create several lines in here. So I'm going to write one, two, three, and we'll have also four, five, six, and let's put seven, comma, eight. So we've got three lines and each line is separated by commas. That's the main thing here. Now let's turn this into a stream. So just for variation, this time I'll use stream.of instead of arrays.stream. And it, it will do in this case the same thing. So let's write stream.of lines and then we'll do for each and just print out what we've got. I'm going to arrange this a little bit. So let's do this. So if we just do this, nothing's actually splitting up the lines. So what we get is, is actually just one single string here. Let's create a blank line up here somewhere just so that we can more easily see which is the output from this particular program. So we've got that and it is one single string. To prove that I could, for example, use map to put quotes around the string. So I could say dot map and we'll get the string as S. And we'll say s arrow and stick some single quotes in here or some other punctuation. Add on the string itself and then another single quote. There I need a plus. And then if we run this, we see that yes, we've got just one single string. But what we can do is now split these lines up. So at this point, when we're actually creating the string, the easiest way to do that is just to split it up right here. Let's say lines.split and we'll split on just a kind of line v carriage return, a new line character. So if I run that, now we can see that we have three separate strings corresponding to the lines. But what if I want to split this up further? What if I actually want each of these to be a separate string? So the lines are basically defined by having a new line at the end of each one, a new line character. But within each line, we want to split on commas. And we can actually do that using flat map. So let's insert a flat map right here after we've got the individual lines as elements in the stream. So I'm going to have flat map and we'll use a lambda expression again. So we'll get the string as S. And remember flat map has to return a stream. So I'm, I want to split up the lines with string dot split. And I want to split this time on commas. But this is no good by itself because that's not a stream that we're returning. So to get a stream again, I could use arrays.stream or stream.of. So let's put in the bracket here and run that and see how it looks. And then we can see that we have got the separate strings, the separate numbers here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It doesn't look too pretty though, because we've got spaces all over the place. And I could use an extra map to just trim the strings, or I could even do that here. I could insert a string.trim right there, but let's do it here instead, just to illustrate. So let's put in a map and we could do it like this. So I could say s arrow s dot trim. Let's take a look at this. And if I run that now, we've hopefully trimmed off the spaces. There we go. So we got rid of the extra spaces. But you might now recognize at this point in this small course that instead of doing that, what we could do is just string colon colon trim and just use like a method reference here. And if I run that, it has the same effect. And we have nicely trimmed strings with the spaces trimmed off the beginnings and the ends. Now there are two more examples that I want to show you here. And the first one is I want to show you that we can turn a series of strings into some other object completely, and even into multiple different objects. So we could create a stream of strings. And for each string, we can add multiple different objects of whatever type we like to the stream. So for this, I'm going to go and get my person class 
that I've used in one or two previous videos now. I'm just going to copy that whole thing. We've just got name and age attributes and we've got a con we've got constructors to set the name or the name and the age. We've got a two string method and a couple of get methods. So let's just paste that right up here somewhere. Actually, I need these import statements above the class and then it should hopefully compile. Now let's create a stream of names of people. So again, I'll just create a blank line here and then we'll have a stream dot of and I'm just going to put some names in here off the top of my head. Let's have Jill, Joe and Jack. And I'm going to have a for each in there so that we can take a look at this. Let's have a dot for each and print line. And if I run that, then we get Jill, Joe and Jack. Now, if I want to turn these into people objects, so I want one person object for each of these strings, I can use map. If I want multiple person objects for each string, I can use flat map. It's that simple. So let's do flat map and I'm going to get the strings one by one. And then we can use stream.off again. Remember that returns a stream and we have to return a stream from flat map. And let's say we want two person objects for every string. And remember person has a constructor that accepts a string for the name of the person. So all I have to do here is new person S and let's have the same thing again, new person S. So now when we run this and take a look at the output, we've got uh, two person objects for every string. So flat map's very flexible and the majority of the time I find it really intuitive. There's not too much to trip you up with it, I don't think. With an exception, an important exception, which is a little bit tricky unless you know what to do about it. We'll take a look at that in just a second, but first a really quick bit of advertisement. For caverprogramming.com, my website, there's lots of courses on here, some free, some paid, and I'm going to leave you a 30% discount link in the description of this video if you want the monthly subscription where you pay every month, unsubscribe anytime you like, and you get access to all of these courses. And you can download my videos as well if you want. So do take a look at that. Many thanks. I really appreciate it. And sorry about the advertising. I've got to make a living somehow. But now let's take a look at the one thing that might well trip you up with streams and with flat map in particular. So we flattened a 2D array of strings. But if you have a 2D array of numbers, it does get slightly trickier for reasons that I will explain. Let's have a 2D array of numbers here. So I'm going to say int and we want a two dimensional array of let's call it numbers and set that equal to and we'll have curly brackets here and within the curly brackets, let's have more curly brackets and I'm going to have one, two, three. Let's have four comma five just to show that this works fine with jagged arrays and six, seven, eight. Now let's use, for example, stream.of to turn this into a stream. So I'm going to say stream dot of numbers and let's put a for each in here and put in print. Remember I defined print earlier on. So what do you think? If I run this, what are we going to get? Well, if we run this, it's actually not really too unexpected. Maybe help if I put a blank line in here just to make it easier to see what's going on. But what we've got as elements in our stream they're all run together, so a little bit hard to see maybe, but they are actually just the sub arrays. That's what we've got as elements in our stream. Let's change this to print line actually, because that's clearer. So then you'd probably think, well, suppose that you want to get each number in your stream as an individual element. What you would probably do is this. So you'd say flat map and we can write n arrow stream dot of n. You might think that would work. It doesn't, but you might think that it would. Let's just try it. So if we run it, wow, well, we've still got arrays there, right? So that hasn't done what we expected. And you could equivalently do stream colon colon of. It's exactly the same thing and it produces exactly the same useless results. And this is identical to what we had previously. So this isn't actually doing anything useful. It's not splitting the sub arrays up into their elements. We're just creating a new stream that has the exact same items as before. In fact, 
we need to be a bit more precise here, we could use, since we're dealing with integers, we can use int stream. And let's add the import for int stream. And when we try that, it still doesn't work. And the error that I get here tells me that basically it's expecting a stream to be returned from flat map and it's getting an int stream and it doesn't like that. And the trick is that we need to say flat map to int. So just a slightly different method. And it would help if I spell it correctly as well. Okay. Now it's not happy with my custom rolled print line here because it implements consumer and not int consumer. So let's just go back to system.out colon colon print line, which will work absolutely fine. And now if you run this, it does what we expect. And we've actually got the, the numbers individually right here, one through to eight. So this works the same with doubles and longs. The issue is that you have to kind of think about the fact that with doubles, ints and longs, often you're working with primitive streams that don't behave quite the same as the just regular generic stream type. So for example, if we had instead of ints here, if we had doubles, then I can use double stream of, and here I can use flat map to double. And if I add the import there, that will also work. And it's the same with long. There's a long stream of and a flat map to long. So that's, that's the only trick here, really. The regular flat map that you might expect to work in this context doesn't quite work. And you just have to know about the existence of int stream, double stream, long stream, and flat map to int, flat map to double, and flat map to long. And if you put those in, it works just as you might think it would. Okay, that's it for this video. There's more coming. We're going to look in detail at things like how to implement reducers and consumers and so on. And we'll take a look at the kind of lazy inherent nature of streams as well. But that's to come in future videos. So until next time, happy coding.